today. We actually had uh, almost an inch of rain so far at the Eugene Airport. And then as you head up the road to places like Corvallis and Albany, uh, they got about three quarters of an inch of rain out there today. A lot more on the way as we go into tomorrow. I think an additional inch is not out of the realm of possibilities by this time tomorrow night. It is busy out there this evening. Luckily, though, a lot of the heaviest rainfall is now shifting off to our southeast, but behind the front, that's where you get that shift in the wind direction where some of the strongest winds will be pushing on through. As we go into tonight, you'll notice that we continue to get those showers that will move on through the region. It looks like as we go into Wednesday at 9 o'clock at night, again, we're still tracking that heavy snow across the Oregon Cascades. Thursday, we get a little bit of a break, if you want to call it that. And then our next storm comes on in on Friday. Here's Friday morning at 8 o'clock off to the west. Plenty of green showing up on the map, and that's going to overspread the area on Friday afternoon. 1 o'clock, very messy traveling here on Friday. And then as we go into Friday night and Saturday, this is where I really want you to pay attention. We get some colder air with east winds that come in through the Columbia Gorge. And again, where that snow and ice set up will completely be dictated by the track of the low, as I'll explain in one moment. What you're seeing right here, the pink on the map, that is ice potential for Friday night going into Saturday. Look at the time, Saturday at 4 a.m. Once you get into the South Willamette Valley, sometimes you get that cold, dense air that kind of gets lodged into the Willamette Valley as you're between two mountain ranges. By Saturday morning, again, you get that warmer air that kind of overspreads the region, and that should allow that flip-flop back to all rain as we go into the afternoon hours. Let's talk about some of the possible tracks here because this low pressure system can take one of two tracks. Track number one on Friday night would bring ice to the area. That would be more of a south track you have a counterclockwise spin. You're pulling in cold air from the gorge. That would put Portland in the snow. That would put ice, us in the ice. Let's talk about track number two. So here's track number two. That would be more of a northerly track. We would be in the warmer side of the low. That would keep us all wet and rainy here. That would put Portland in the ice and put the snow in southern Washington. So again, we're still a few days away. So this definitely can and will change between now and then. The one thing I can promise you, though, the cold is on for the middle of next week. We get a southerly branch of that jet stream that dips all the way down to southern Oregon, and it gets cold as we go into Monday and Tuesday as we'll drop down into the middle end of the 20s. <coughs> Excuse me. As we get a look here at the seven-day forecast, generally speaking, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, things do improve. It looks like high pressure builds back in and things will be drying up just a little bit. Down in the Umpqua Basin, temperatures will stay on the chilly side. Blizzard conditions are expected here across the Cascade Passes. And then here in the valley, we're talking about wet weather through Friday and then the possibility of freezing rain here on Saturday. But again, the jury is still very much out on the track that that low takes. And so be sure to tune in tomorrow morning uh, for the morning team for an update on that, Cam. Next on KEZI 9 Sports, a little mini round ball wrap is an action packed night in high school basketball takes over. KEZI 9 News is sponsored in part by.